Hello all, my name is Jamisha Baysmore. I am the owner and illustrator for Coco Twins. And what I wanna show you is a design tool called Gravit. Gravit allows you to edit your SVG files. It allows you to create SVG files. Um, it allows you to do so much. Gravit has a pro version, which is a paid subscription version, but they also have a free version, but it has limited um, resources. So in the beginning, when you guys first sign up, what you're gonna see is, when I go to, to Designer, let's do Gravit, let's go back to Gravit. If it wants to do Gravit, and you click on Gravit, you would notice here that it says a design app that works for you, and the pricing, So if we scroll in again, there you go. So now the pricing, what you see here is the pricing for the software, online software that you can also download. If you decide to work online, remember that you can go from computer to computer, desktop, I'm sorry, desktop to desktop, laptop to laptop, because anytime you need to work, because what happens is, is that the, your documentation is saved online, okay? Um, some of the drawbacks about working with the free version is that your PDFs have a low DPI, but you can always um, create the PDF and then bring it into another software like Canva to up the DPI. Um, color, color space is only RG, RGB, that's the only thing that they use. You can't work offline, meaning you can't download it and work on it. Um, advanced export options, like exporting as an SVG, a PNG, or PSD, whatever else you need to download. The version history you also don't have. Now with the Designer Pro version, you get all of this. So this is the version that I am going to be using. Um, let's see, let's look at the full, the version. Here we go. So this is even a bigger breakdown of it. Work offline, meaning use our desktop app so you don't have to depend on internet, internet connection. Cloud storage, you get 500 megabytes versus unlimited. Google Drive integration, the free version doesn't integrate while the paid version does. PDF export, your DPI is your quality. You get a lower quality if you use the free version. You get a higher quality if you use the paid version. Color space, RGB, it's just a code for coloring, so they limit you to one. And CMYK, HSB, and RGB are all color, color spaces that are allowed in the pro version. Um, do yourself a favor and Google CMYK, HSB, and RGB, so that way you will better understand what, what each does, okay? I know CMYK stands for cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. And if sometimes, it, well, if you get a chance to unpackage any type of, um, what is it, any type of ink, you may see the letter C on the ink for cyan, M for magenta, yellow, Y for yellow, and K for black, okay? So it's just colors. Um, the HSB stands for something else. RGB is red, green, blue, okay? SVG export um, is the default export for the free version. SVG export is the full, you get the full version with the pro. Now the SVG is what I want to teach you guys how to do, how to create your own SVGs from the images that you create, okay? And you don't have to be super fancy or anything like that. You could go ahead and just give it a try and maybe work with circles, squares, rectangles, or whatever else um, to go ahead and give it a try. Um, advanced export options with the advanced export options you're able to download as a PNG, a JPEG, a PDF, and an SVG. You don't have it in a free version, but you have it in the full version. 
okay? Reuse of ex existing elements, which basically means that it'll save elements for you. And the free version, excuse me, in a free version, you don't get that. The full version, you do, and so on and so forth, okay? So make sure you, you, you give yourself a chance to go through that and to check it out. And um, let's see where we're going to get started. So now I, I'm using the pro version for this, okay? But you guys will get the idea of using the free version too if you're not ready to make the commitment to purchasing a license to the software for a year. Right now they have it for $49. I do have a coupon for $25. I'm not sure if it's um, linked to my name, but if anyone wants it, you're more than welcome to have it. Um, if they will allow me to place a link for the $25 fee versus the $49 a year fee, then I will put it up. All right, so let's get started. So we're gonna select start now. And it's gonna bring you to a page where it's gonna ask you what do you want to design? You have the option of designing on paper, designing a desktop backdrop, social media posts, um, print on demand. You can create things for your devices. So just have fun and explore everything and just just have at it for whatever it is you want to design. Let's see what it what it what it's going to give us if we select print on demand. Oh, okay, so it works with the Amazon shirt, Amazon pop socket, T public t shirt, cafe press t shirt, red bubble t shirt. Nice. Okay, so I'm gonna go back though because I don't want to use that. So let me hit back one more time. It's gonna let me out. It's not gonna let me out. So I'm gonna close that one. I'll go back to my original grab it pop page, select page size. I want to do U.S. letter portrait, 8.5 8 by 11. So I'm going to select that. And what you will see here is you have your tools across the top. You have your pick buttons. Over here, you have your layers, libraries, and symbols where you can save information so you can use it over and over again. Or even if you create something somewhere else and you want to upload it to your library, so that way you can reuse something that you created, then that would be awesome too. Over here is your page setup, your color. You can change your page setup, any bleed, anything that goes over the side. You can select how much of that you want to work. You can set up your, um, your margins. You can save it as a master. You can work in inches, pixels, millimeters, centimeters, picas, or points. Your DPI, you can set as low as 72 or 300. And DPI is dots per inch, okay? You can have the grid off. You can turn the grid on. You can set the grid to isometric. So that way, if you wanted to draw like a cube at an angle, then you can use the isometric as a reference. You can also go ahead and change the size of the spacing and you can change the angles as well. But what we're gonna do for this is turn the grid off. And what I want you to do is to select file, open, open local file. And you can pick yourself an image that you already have created. Um, mm -mm -mm. Let's see, there's nothing in the class. Let's go to, I'll use my Benadryl drip. I haven't, I haven't worked with this one yet. So now you see the Benadryl drip that I brought into the picture. And this Benadryl drip is actually a PNG file, okay? So when I select it, and this is why you have to work with SVG files. So when I select it, it will not allow me to select the pieces individually. It's set, it's set up so everything is set as one, okay? So that's why you can't use PNGs. Let me go ahead and open up. Let me back up a little bit. You can use a PNG, um, and you can convert the PNG into an SVG, but that takes a little bit of time. And that's something that I would teach to my more advanced classes or teach in my more advanced classes 
to help those guys go from PNG to SVG to work the, the image backwards, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and do open from local file. And I am going to pick myself an SVG. So now that I have my SVG open, what you will see on the left are all of my layers, okay? And this layer is off. This layer is off. You can also lock the layer, so that way if you, if you want to make any changes, move anything around, that item won't move, but we're not gonna lock it. The girl's bow is turned off, but the girl herself is on. And what you will see here under the layers, you have shoes, shoelaces, the earring, skin, the shirt, her hair, and her pants. And I typically layer my SVGs to make them intuitive. I don't even know if I want to use the word intuitive. Just easier to recognize or understand what they are. So instead of leaving it as, um, what do they call it? Maybe just some random number or text or something like that. But I want you guys to know what it is. So now that we have the SVG open, what we're going to go ahead and do is, is we're going to make a few changes. I want to show you guys what the BGM2 element is. And the BGM stands for Black, Girl, Black Girls Magic, okay? So when I turn it on, what you will see is the text for BGM. And when you expand it, you will see the different parts of the BGM, okay? And if I wanted to change the purple to a different color, all I would do is select the element that I want to change, go over to the right. I can change its position, its size, its angle, okay? I can change um, opa opacity, 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 whatever. Blending normal, style, leave the style as it is. Let me go back and select that. Your fill color, you can change it here and you also have different options where you can put a little flare to your color. You can also change the border of the item, which is just the, the, the color BGM. Blur it, color adjust, drop a shadow, in a shadow more, you can add a shadow. So there are a lot of options that you can do. But what I'm gonna do, let's see here, the BGM, so I'm gonna select the BGM. And I am working with, looks like the outline. So I'm going to go ahead and change it to a different color. Now I want to change the BGM itself to a different color. And all I'm doing is selecting the element from the left under layers and going over to the right and selecting the fill color. So I can select that. And say, for instance, I want it to be that yellow. I want the BGM that's pink to be yellow but I don't know what the code is for that color. So what I would do is go ahead and select the element and then select the eyedropper to sample the color. Now that I have sampled the color, what you will notice here now is that the BGM is no longer, I think it was a pink. It is now the same yellow as her top. Let's go ahead and change. You know what, let's turn on her bow. When we turn on her bow, we could go ahead and set it up where her bow is the same color as her shirt, just by selecting the element, selecting the dropper, and sampling the color from her shirt. Now we have a yellow bow as well, okay? Then we can go ahead, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to set that bow maybe to, let's see that color, maybe to a slightly darker yellow. And this is what I mean by RGB, your red, your green, your blue, your hex code. Um, what is it? Fill, not fill. It is the opacity for your RGB. This is what your HSB will look like. These are your codes for your HSB. These are your codes for your CMYK, okay? But what I like to use is the RGB. If I ever need 
to find a color, I can go to a website called Color Scheme Color, excuse me. And when I go to Scheme Color, what you will notice is that you will bring up a ton of palettes of coordinated colors. So, so, excuse me. So if I wanted to do maybe spring and then enter, search it and it's thinking, it will bring up all of these colors for spring. Now, if I wanted to use the, let's see something really cute, beautiful spring colors, I can select it and it's thinking. And it will bring up the color codes here. And what you can do, if you like, say for instance, this yellow versus the yellow that I have, and I showed you under the color, the color um, palette here, that you can use the hex code, the RGB code. We're not gonna worry about the 100% right now because we, we don't wanna put any fading on a color. So just pay attention to the hex the, and the RGB. So when we go back to our color scheme, we want this yellow, and you will see here, here's your hex code, here's your RGB code, and here's your CMY, your CMYK code. And this is the name that they gave it. What I'm going to go ahead and select is the HEX code. And I am going to highlight here where it says HEX code and paste my color there. And what it did, it made, what did I have highlighted? Let me go back. Let me do her shirt. Let me highlight her shirt. Now let me select the color. Now let me do the HEX so you can see it, the hex code. And paste it. And now you see her, her shirt is now the same color as Golden Poppy. Now I'm going to go ahead and make her pants apple. So I'm going to select hex, go to grab it select her pans and in all of the images that I create I label them and I encourage you to do the same to make um, making changes a lot easier so now I'm going to go ahead and select fills and I'm going to drop the HEX code there paste and now her pants are green I'm going to select her pants and now I'm going to add a border let's see what happens if I add black. Now I have an outline for her pants. And I can do the same thing for the shirt where I can select borders, select color fill, and set it to black. You can also do, let's go back to, let's try skin. We can change her skin complexion to a different color. And if you want to know the hex code for different skin, for different skin tones, go back to color scheme. Search for skin tone. Accept it by hitting, by hitting enter. And here are your um, skin, your skin tones, your skin shades. You have dark skin, you have real skin tones. They break it down by Caucasian. I mean, it's, it's a lot that you can actually select from here. You know, if you're freezing or uh, you want to work with, what is it, Thanos? I think Thanos was a, was a character in one of the Thor movies, I think. I think he was blue. I'm not sure. Um, but you can select anything that you want to select. And I'm going to select skin improvement tones. And when with the skin improvement tones, what that means is that they just added that. They just added that. They're not saying that um, this, this is a better skin tone to use. I remember getting an email saying that they were adding that. So I want to go ahead and make her a different complexion. So I'm going to select tan Crayola. And when I select the hex code, I go back. I select her skin. I change the color because I copied the hex. Paste it in there. And I hit enter. When I do a copy between the two different online software, all I'm doing is highlighting, and I'm using a Windows-based platform, Windows 10. All I'm doing is highlighting, right-clicking, copying. 
going back to grab it, highlighting the hex code, right clicking and pasting. So that way you don't have to try to remember any of the hex codes or anything like that. Now I'm going to add a shade. I don't want to sample a color. I'm going to add an outline, but this time I might want to go with Nope Chocolate. So that way she has a brown outline to her skin. And I'm going to type it here, paste it, and enter. And let's go back to scan because it didn't accept it. just select something first just to see what's going on here so she does have the outline on her skin let's set the dpi up to 300 we need this to be a lot cleaner and we're doing pixels let's go back to so our skin has an outline to it our hair bow we can turn our hair bow off if we find it to be if it doesn't fit you can add your own hair bow let's see let's go back to shoes and we can add, we don't want it to be transparent. Let's see, shoes. Did I lose the shoes? The shoes. Select that. Color fill. I want to select black. So the shoe has an outline. The laces and the soles. Now the shoes. I want to do the same thing here. I don't want it to be transparent. And transparent just means you can see through it. So um, when I speak of PNG files with a transparent background, it just means that you won't have that white background. And the same thing holds true when you're working with colors of your elements. So now she's all outlined and ready to go. So once you get her here, what you can go ahead and do is do a file, export, and you want to export it as a scalable vector graphic, which is an SVG. That is what an SVG is. A scalable vector graphic, meaning that no matter how you stretch the image, it will retain its DPI. So we're going to go ahead and select SVG. And what do you see here? It automatically placed a copy of the SVG on my desktop. Now when I open it, I want to open it with Adobe Illustrator because Adobe Illustrator does the same thing. But I know Adobe Illustrator is kind of pricey. It can be a little intimidating, but um, okay. can be a little intimidating, but uh, you know, it's a pretty simple tool to use once you get used to it. So now that I brought her, now that I opened the SVG file, What you would notice is all of my elements are here. It took the naming off, but all of my elements are still separated. And you can go through and rename everything and close that out. Now, if you wanted to take your image and save it as a PNG file with a transparent background, make sure you see the checkers for the background. If you don't see the checker for the back checkers for the background, and say your background is white like that, that means when you save it as a PNG file, an SVG file, or even a JPEG file, you're going to have that white background. So for your page, select it and just set it to, let me go back, just set it to, where is it, transparent. Are you going to let me do it to transparent? There we go. Just set it back to 0% for opacity, okay? Um, so that is creating or editing your SVG file in Gravit. If you want to export it as a PNG file with a, um, with a transparent background, make sure your background is transparent and select PNG. Now, when I go into this file, show in folder, I have my PNG file, and now I can bring it on to, see if I wanted to create a background for it. I use Canva for this, and this is another class, but I just wanted to show you guys 
what I actually use. Um, so I'm going to create a design and I want it to be a flyer. I want elements and say if I wanted butterflies for this. Just type in butterflies. And I'll just place, paste that there. Are you still thinking? And then position, make sure it's middle center. And then I can upload my image that I created should be under downloads, the PNG file, and then placer. And now I have myself a full, let me move them back, position. Oh, I know what happened to her. She ended up going into the background, but now she's, let's see, uh, undo. Make her, a little, make her a little smaller. And now I'm gonna do position, middle, center. So whatever you want to do, you could go ahead and create yourself a full page background from that. Now, I'm going to go back into Gravit. I'm going to close out of this new design. I'm going to do paper size letter. Okay, now I want to draw. I'm going to go ahead and draw shapes. So if I draw a shape, so say if I wanted a circle, And remember, um, in a video that I, well, you, you may not have had a chance to see, see the video, but in order to stretch this circle so that way it's uniform, is to hold the shift key down and then stretch. So that way you don't have it doing one of these numbers. That's if you don't hold, hold the shift key down. So hold the shift key down and bam, you got it. You got your circle, okay? Now, let's see here. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. I'm going to go to a little, a little bigger. And don't be afraid to zoom in because what I want to do now, let's see what they have under libraries. So say if I type eyes, let's see what we get. Hmm, we got eyeballs. So I could go ahead and select, I don't like any of those eyes though. Stickers, let's see. So let's just go ahead and draw on eye. So I'm going to select the shape again. I'm going to draw another circle, but I want it to be uniform. So I'm going to hold my shift key down. And if you notice here, they also include guidelines so that way you can stay centered within the element. Okay. And I'm going to change the color to black. Okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and move that up there and I want to shrink it down just a little bit. And now I am going to go ahead and draw and let's see, do I want to do any lips? I don't want to do any lips. Let's just go ahead and draw. Let's see if it'll let me do, oh, no freestyle. Okay. Okay, so delete. We're going to delete that out of there. And we're going to delete that too. So let's just go ahead and put an afro on a dude. So I'm going to go back to the select key, which is the arrow, to come out of everything else I was in. You see I have, a ten, I have 10 days left to buy it, but it's letting you use the full version once you sign up, just to give you, your, just to give you a chance to give it a, a go. So now I'm going to copy. And what I do sometimes, I'll right-click, to see what is available and it's not. So we're gonna go ahead and do a copy from up top. Copy, or you can use Control C and then to paste is Control V. Oh, it took my color. Okay, so we're gonna do edit, copy, Okay, so control C, now do a control V, and it copied it. 
So if you want to copy, it doesn't allow, my system doesn't allow me to right click and copy. I have to do a control C to copy it and then a control V to paste it. And when I do my control V, I have another copy. Okay. That looks like a boob. I'm going to take that out of there. Okay. So now what I want to do, I want to stretch this out because I actually want to get a dude an afro. So I'm going to make this black. Okay. Give him an afro. And now I want to give the guy bangs. So I'm going to go ahead and draw another circle. Or give the girl bangs. Draw another circle. And I'm going to make that color black. Okay. Now if I want an earring, let's see if they have earrings over here. Let's see what we come up with. Hmm. Nothing. So let's go ahead and select the circle. But this time we want it to, we don't want the circle to be, we want it more of an ellipse-like shape. Okay. The inside, we're going to make blank. <clears throat> so we're going to set the inside to, I'm sorry, let me go back. Select it. We're going to select the inside to, See if they have transparent here. No, so we're going to go ahead and select it, set, set it to zero. And we're going to do our border. We're going to set our border to maybe five. Or we can do, make our border maybe. And now it's thick. Now I want it to be gold. So I'm going to select the earring again. And I'm going to select my border because I want the inside to stay transparent. And I'm going to select gold. Okay. Now I can stretch it over to make it do what I want to do. And then if you want to move the earring behind the face, you go to your layers and then you just move it down. Let's see here, where is my ellipse? This guy. Make sure. Yep. I want to change the placement. There it is. And now it's behind the hair. But I don't want it to be that far behind here. Let's see. Move it up one more time. Move it up one more time. And then we, we have something like that. If you want to go ahead and just edit it, um, you can always go here and let's see here. Where is the erase button? Or just cut it. Just trim it out. Pull this out. Let's get it to trim. Okay. Let's just exit. We have to get out of that. So I'm going to select the arrow again and select arrow. And what I want to do is select the circle. And I want to. I can create a symbol. I can turn that into a symbol so I can always use it. Let's see, that's something that's good. Didn't expect to get there that quick, but now you have earrings. So if you go over to your symbols now, you'll always have a copy of your earring. Okay, so I'm going to place the earring here. And now I want to copy. And remember, we can't do a right click. We have to do a control C. Now we do a control V. And when we do a control V, we have another earring that we can place. And remember that you have your guidelines that you can follow to make sure that everything stays placed perfectly. Now let's go back to libraries. I want to see if they have lips. Now they have lips, so I'm going to place her lips there. Select her again. Select. And I'm going to, okay, undo. Go back to layers. And what is this thing considered here? Is it all one? Oh, so I have to group it. So let's go ahead and just select, select, select. 
select. And I'm holding the control key down. And now I want to group selection. So now when I move the lip, the lips, the group. Oh, come on, you you bum. I'm having the hardest time moving this thing. <laughs> Let me zoom in some more because I'm not sure what's going on here. So I can see exactly. So I'm just going to highlight what I want and then I'm going to use the shift key and use my arrow to get it to go where I need it to go since it's not selecting what I needed to select. And that's all I'm using is my, my arrow key. Okay. And now you have a lady that has lips. Let me zoom in some more. And let's make her skin a different color. Let's look at our skin colors here. Let's make her metallic bronze. So when we go back to grab it, we're gonna change the color of her skin to metallic bronze. We got something sitting here that's just like, we, want, we don't want it to say earring. Let's delete that out. So let's, let's undo, go back to where we were before because we don't want the word earring on our image. So let's delete that out. And I grouped them, didn't I? And all I did was just delete the word um, in ring. So now I'm going to go ahead and move it up. So that way you can see the in ring, in ring here and here. Let's see, since we don't, I didn't like any of their eyes. What I would do is draw my own my eyes and build my library. But what I'm going to go ahead and do, let's see if they have eye glasses. illustrations let's see what sunglasses let's see what we get for sunglasses oh, we got a whole head that we could have worked with but we went on ahead and drew it from scratch. Okay, so undo. We're going to take that guy off. And no sunglasses, huh? Illustrations. Let's see what we have in here. See if we can find anything we can use. So I would have to bring in my own symbol. Let me go back to, let's just leave it like this. I don't wanna go back and, and start showing you guys other things. But what you'll notice here is that you have layers set up. So you can select the layer. Let's, let's move this down here because it's part of the lip. So if we select this, it's gonna select all of the lips. Double click on it, just name it lip lips so that's everything under the lips this is her face so we're going to call it face this is an earring so we're going to double click on it and call it an earring and all i'm doing is double clicking on the names and i'm going to take this ellipse and move it out 
uh, from up under there because we don't need it to, we don't need that. Let's delete out earrings. Now I'm going to select this, which is this earring. Under to earring. Then ellipse is her hair. This ellipse. I think was her bangs. Let's try to move that up to see what we get. And set it to black. Hey, we got an over the eye thing. And you can do a control C, control V to give it just a little bit of something else to it. So she has some fancy going on there. So now what I'm going to go ahead and do, we don't want that under lips. So I'm going to drag that name down. I'm also going to drag this name down because we don't want it to be grouped with the lips. But we do want it to be above the face. So here is hair. Hair. Let me double click again. Hair, earring, earring. Let's move the hair up here. This ellipse is here. Now something isn't here here because I have four. Let's see one, two, three. Face. That's the face. And then this is here. But we want to keep this hair behind the face. Now we have an entire face, and now we can jazz her out. Let's see if we wanted to do, what do we have under stickers? Not much. So I would go ahead and build my own sticker, stickers and bring them in, but that's for another class to show you guys how to do that. What do we have under illustration? So say if she's a photographer, let's bring her in as a photographer. And now she's taking pictures. We can also, excuse me, we can also, let's see. Excuse me, anything else that's usable? No, not that I would use. But what's realistic? Oh, she can use this camera. Delete. Put this camera in front of her. And now she's taking pictures. Let's see what the layers look like for this guy. And that's a group. So you can actually change the colors of the layers. So now what you have built yourself in doing all of this is your own SVG file. Just from shapes and symbols and libraries. Now what you can do is go to file and you can export her as an SVG file. Let's save it first. And what my system usually does is scan anything that I download to be sure that I'm not downloading anything that could cause harm to my computer. Now, or we could do a file, export as a let's see, PNG, okay? But make sure our background, our paper is set to transparent. That's something I didn't do. So now our paper is set to transparent and we could go ahead and do export as a PNG, okay? Um, when we go into, say for instance, if you're in Cricut or if you're in Adobe Illustrator, let's see, show and folder. I'm gonna go ahead and open this in Adobe Illustrator. And if you click your layers, Did I pick the PNG? Let's see, file, open, let me go back. I did. Select the SVG, open it with 
Adobe Illustrator. Let's see, error, and there are all my layers. And I can come here and I can change colors and make edits as I see fit here too. Now in Adobe Illustrator is where I have my library. So if I wanted to continue building her or adding elements to it, like if I wanted my glasses, place a copy, because I drew these glasses a long time ago. And what I usually do is just save elements. And that's for another day, the class. When you go to glasses, now I go to lenses, and I want to be able to see her face. I'm going to set it to 50 cent opacity. And then the frames, maybe I want the frames to be pink. And now I have a whole SVG file. Okay, let's go back to grab it. Let me minimize this stuff. Close out and go back to grab it. So say for instance, let's see, file, open local file. The one thing this thing doesn't do is convert images. Let's see if it does. Let's see what we get. So we're going to go ahead and open local file. I'm going to find one of my images that I haven't converted into an SVG or used before. So let's go into here. I'm going to go to downloads. And these are items that I have not converted into an SVG file. So we have these pieces. So say if I wanted to see if it will let me if it will let me split it up. Vectorize image. Get back. Vectorize image. Let's see how it reads it. And it's still thinking. You see the red bar at the bottom? It's still thinking. And it's going to take a minute. And let's see what we get when we vectorize the image. Mm -hmm. I've just been clicking all over the place. Now i got to get out of this select. There we go. What do we get now? Group. Ah, and then it separated everything. So your image that you actually draw by hand, or if you create a digital image, you can always upload it to convert it into a scalable vector graphic in SVG. And then you can go ahead and group pieces together from over here at the library, and it sets it up by color. Okay, but you can also, let's zoom in, you can also select pieces. Let's see what, what was selected when I selected that. Let me change the color to see what I get. Okay. 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 So I know that this part, part of the pans, part of the pans, part of the pans. So what I would do, I would select that piece and just make it easier on myself. Let me scroll up and see if I can find that layer. So I know this is pants. This should be also pants, I think. I'm not sure if this is also pants. Let's see, let's change the color. Or some little teeny tiny part that's there because it cuts it into so many pieces. Turn that magnet off and just select the shirt. I'm going to change the shirt to maybe the orange. 
and then you see all the pieces that's connected to what you just changed the shirt and now this is and it, and it pops it to the top whatever layer you're working on it pops it to the top i want to make sure that that is correct and it doesn't that's not the truth so it doesn't pop it to the top so if you select it it highlights it now i'm going to go ahead and change it to maybe black yeah yep so now i can change this to collar tag go back come on select here we go collar tag so all you did all i'm showing you here is how to take your digital image that you drew maybe with your iPad or on your phone, uploading it into Gravit, and then taking and converting it into an SVG file. I hope this class has helped you guys. If you have any questions or concerns, or if you want more information, please drop your information in the comment section below. And I will get back to you really, really soon. And thank you guys so very much for your patience. And thank you so very much for watching. Bye-bye.